When it comes to lazy programming, I'm one of the first people in line, and recently I whipped up a little script so you can add, commit, and push changes to your project with one simple command. <laughs> Real Tough Candy from RealToughCandy.com back online with you guys today. So last night I was working on this Svelte experimental project, just getting used to the workflow, trying out some SSH stuff. And as I was committing this stuff to GitHub, I noticed I was doing the same things over and over. Git add all, git commit. Here's my commit message. That's meaningless because it's just my project. Git push. Just a lot of repetitive typing. So I said, you know what? This is why we're programmers, so we don't have to do this stuff. So I, I whipped up a little bash script, and today I want to show you guys how it works in case you're interested in using it on your own projects. So I call this quickie push. It has its own little funny social media card and it's a dead simple bash script. It also involves an alias. So instead of invoking the script, you're actually just typing a word. So let's go ahead. I'm not even going to clone the project because it's just so small. We'll go here to the bash script itself and I'll just install this on my machine like it's my first time ever using this thing. All right, so we'll go ahead. I'll just copy this, open up a little code editor here, paste that, save it. I'll save this on the desktop. We'll just call it quickie push. All right, that was simple enough. And then I'm gonna go back and go to the alias file here. This is just one simple line and it's gonna go in my bash profile. So I might have my text editor. Op okay, my text edit is open. We'll start this process over because normally people's bash profiles aren't open. So go to your terminal and then clear this junk out and then go open dot bash underscore profile. And then I already have an alias here for Metasploit, but now I want to add another alias. And this is going to allow me to just type the word push in the terminal. Inside this quote, we're going to put the path to the bash script I just created, right? So on a Mac, I just right click it and then I hit option because that'll allow me to copy the path name. Now I have the path name. I'll go back to the bash profile, paste. And there's the path to the script. Save. I'm not quite done yet because I need to make this script executable. So what I need to do is change directories. I think I put this on the desktop, right? And then I'm going to chmod. And then the command for making it executable is plus x. And now I will put this in quotes. I guess I didn't need to change directories to the desktop, but oh well. So. Just put the absolute path in the quotes, and then if I don't get yelled at, that should mean it's good to go. All right. So it didn't yell at me, so that probably means it just made this script executable. And now what I can do is go to one of my projects. To save some monotony here, I'm just going to use an existing project. You would use this program just like you would use it if you were typing it manually. Like if you were adding something, committing something, and pushing something, you have to do a git init on that project. And if you're pushing it to GitHub, you have to have a, a repo. What I'm saying is you can't just start a project on your desktop and then, you know, do all these commands. You have to set it up so that Git and GitHub can uh, work nicely together with your project. So the project I'm going to use this on is called Svelte Test. And as you can see, I've already set it up. Now, when you're doing this process manually, it's a lot of monotonous typing. Like I mentioned earlier, you start off, you have to add the files that are changed. So git add, then you do a git commit and then add your message. And with a lot of personal projects, you don't need messages or they're not important. So you just like add silly things that aren't really important at all in the commit message. So there's that. I suppose I better change something here. What can I change? We'll just like go like this or something. I'll fix that later. Save it. All right, now I'll get add, get commit. Now get push. So that was that process. And as you can see, this updated that right here. Now we're going to do it the new way with this bash script installed. So let's clear this out. We'll just go ahead and go like this, save it. Now the one thing I'm going to do, we'll just go back and make sure I know what I'm doing here. So the alias is push. All I have to do is type push. And as soon as I hit enter, my program is going to add the changes, commit them with a timestamp. The commit message is going to be a timestamp, and then it's going to push them to this repo that we we're just working with. 
So let's hope this works so I don't look like a fool. Press enter if I dare. Kaboom, I'm back out of that. Now the only thing I changed in this file was bringing this export default app down to line 10 in the main.js file, which is in the source folder. So keep your eye on this. And as I refresh it right now, it should have a timestamp of about 2.17 p.m. military time. And there it goes. Timestamp 2.16.58, May 29th, 2019. And we can see the script works. As you can see, it goes by so much faster. I built this for personal and experimental projects where commit messages aren't important. You shouldn't use this on collaborative projects or corporate projects or projects where other people are gonna be seeing your code and working with your code because commit messages are a form of documentation and they're very important for other people when they're trying to navigate your code. But if it's just you, who cares? Sometimes you just don't care what your commit messages are. And in that case, this script can really help you. So I hope this video was helpful. Just a little time-saving thing I whipped up last night because I was sick of doing the Git add, get commit, get push on a personal experimental project. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up. Let me know what you think. As always, I hope you guys are having a fabulous day and I'll see you in the next video. Are you ready to jumpstart your freelance web development career? Freelance Newbie has you covered. In this video course, you'll learn practical, actionable steps you can start using today to get your first client by the end of the week. Freelance Newbie is produced by a working freelancer whose mission is to help people like you find success and financial independence. In Freelance Newbie, you'll learn how to develop a business plan from scratch. Don't worry, we go through it step by step. Find starter clients that pave the way for five-star reviews and then find full-paying long-term clients. Build your own freelance website to generate quality leads. Figure out a good pricing scheme for your services. Write effective proposals and contracts. Advertise for free or very cheaply for maximum brand exposure and so much more. For the price of the cost of lunch, you can learn how to build a sustainable business doing something you love.